Hello, everyone. It's Kathy again with Backyard Columbus, and today's episode is a called Beyond Basic Landscaping. So first of all, I'd like to tell you, I am not a landscape architect. I am not a master gardener, but I am very passionate about what you can do with your backyard because it, because it has brought me so much joy. And that's honestly, that's why I'm doing this whole podcast. We this is mainly focused on the person living in the suburbs, not the person who has been blessed with two to five acres and you're just living your dream with ponds and woods and creeks or, you know, donkeys, or maybe that's my dream. But the point is, most of us live in the suburbs. And there are so many things you can do in your suburban backyard. And I want to be a facilitator in you getting the most out of your yard. So landscaping is something that seems like lots of people don't really like to do, but they want their yard to look nice. So these are some ideas to let's get beyond just those basics. And when I'm talking about basics, you you drive through any suburban dwelling, okay, or any suburban neighborhood. And what you see is loads of grass, which I've made a podcast about that or a podcast episode called um, Reducing Your Lawn. Sounds less riveting than it is. It actually had some kind of nifty ideas in there, if I do say so myself. But you drive through and you see a tree and some evergreens, you know, the bushes and little trees that stay green all year round. And that is about it. And you can do so much more with kind of not a lot of effort. You know, you, you put the effort into it one or two times and then the point is everything comes back on its own every year. So usually what I see is a tree. And look, oak trees, as I've mentioned before, oak trees are amazing. And you have maple and all kinds. I'm not a tree connoisseur, and I know I'll get lost in it if I try to think of every tree you could plant. But if we just take an oak tree, you're starting from scratch and you just say, hey, I want to get a few things in and, and I want to make good choices. An oak tree can't go wrong. It hosts over 500 species of butterflies and moths, which means those butterflies and moths lay their eggs on the oak leaves, and that is a good thing. N um, birds feed their babies over 90% caterpillars, which is what hatches from those eggs. So that's important. And we want to see butterflies. Nobody, it seems, uh, really gets too geeked out about moths, but they are very important pollinators as well. So an oak tree is a great addition. Now let's move on to uh, some shrubs. You know, this is where people just tune out, I think, because shrubs aren't typically very exciting. If um, boxwoods are very popular, we have some. They're great because you make them round, you make them square, they stay green all the time, and that has value. I've seen birds go in and out of them, but otherwise, boxwoods don't do anything except exist. So I'm working on getting different things other than boxwoods, because that's about the last remnant of not too native, okay? But I'll get to that in a second. So we have boxwoods burning bush. I just had someone the other day say they were ordering a burning bush. They were pretty geeked out about it. They seemed pretty happy that they were adding that to their yard. I didn't say anything. I think I mentioned before, I'm a hairstylist. That's my full-time job. I love what I do, but I don't, it's a, you know, you're a captive audience. So I don't want to trap people and be like, you shouldn't be planting a burning bush. Let me tell you what you should do. Because number one, they didn't ask me what they should be planting. So I just let them have their burning bush moment. Okay. But here's the problem with burning bushes and barberries. You can look both of those up. We had five barberries before I learned what I'm going to tell you. And I love them. They were they did have thorns on them. And I didn't love that. But I had a golden barberry, beautiful lime green. And I was pretty pleased with myself. I'm like, oh, look at that in my landscaping. And then I learned that barberries are actually invasive. And so are burning bushes, actually. And two states, one of them being Massachusetts, I think, but it doesn't matter, have banned them like they do not want you to have them because here's why that matters and here's what happens. So both of those bushes produce berries. Birds eat those berries and you think, well, great, I'm feeding birds. And that would be true, except then the birds fly along, poop those out. And then if, when they're pooping those out in natural areas, you know, like woods and stuff like that, then they overtake the barberries and the burning bushes are too competitive, like they must have a stronger, more uh, rigorous stock to them. And they outcompete the native plants. 
and then they overtake. And that's a problem because our native wildlife grew up with our native plants, not invasive plants. Hopefully that makes sense. So while a few non-native things are fine, native is always for a fact better. So there are many other choices to make that are very pretty other than boxwoods, burning bushes, and barberries. Here are a few ideas. A service berry. A service berry can grow in all kinds of light, partial shade, partial sun, full sun, I would assume. And they get a, a beautiful little flower on them. They produce berries that I don't know that you're really going to want. It's not like it's a raspberry, but the birds will eat those. And it's just a lovely addition in any corner of your yard. It's not like an anchor tree, but it would be a nice bush along any landscaping area in your yard. Red buds are great. Winter berries, and, and by the way, red buds come in a few varieties of colors. Winter berries are nice little bushes to replace boxwoods, which is what I'm going to uh, replace our boxwoods with is winter berries. I believe there is also an ink berry. I'll have to look that up because now I think I'm telling you a weed. So disregard that. Let's just stick with the winter berry. So this is something, look, I'm kind of, I view myself as your idea guy. I'm putting ideas in your head. I am a huge Googler. I don't care what Google's watching or listening to me do. It enhances my life. So I would encourage you to double check everything that I tell you. And A, I, I'm, I'm pretty confident that what I'm telling you is correct, but sure, double check what I'm telling you, but also make sure so you can see the bush, you can see the tree, you can see the flower and see if it's going to fit into your yard and even what you like, because we all have aesthetically things that we like to look at. So make sure it's something that you would like to have in your yard and it would put a little tiny smile on your face at the very least. Azaleas and rhododendrons. I had honestly no idea. And my husband and I got into a little thing about this one day because I was like, that is not native. And he's like, yes, it is. Well, I was incorrect. It is. Those are great additions. More flowers. A button bush. I, please look that up. A button bush, and you can look it up on my Instagram. Uh, you'd have to dig for it, but uh, I'll I'll try to make a post about that. Button bushes are really great. I've never seen anyone else have one. They're actually, I think, pretty common at nurseries, but they get like this little, uh, it looks like an orb, you know, like a little satellite, like a little space satellite of little white flowers. All It's like one ball, okay? Think of a round, something the size of a grape, and it's round, and it has little tiny whitish flowers that stick out all over the place. And bees absolutely love it. I mean, pollinators absolutely love it. So button bushes are a great addition. I have one and I will tell you, I haven't really kept it, kept it trimmed back. It is about six feet tall and it's beautiful. A pussy willow, a pussy willow bush. I'm not talking about some great big thing. And I may be thinking of a weeping willow. I am. Weeping willows are great in their place, but a pussy willow, bushy tree thing, they are great. They're a host plant for something, but they're beautiful. And bees love those as well. Nine bark, shrub dogwoods, high bush cranberries, viburnums. These are all great choices that will get you beyond your basic boxwoods, burning bushes, and barberries. Some great resources for this. OSU, the National Wildlife Federation, and the Nature Conservancy. OSU, and I will put this in the show notes, OSU has a, I'm sure, downloadable, otherwise it'll just be a link, of all these bushes that you can choose from that are native to the United States at minimum. Okay, so maybe it was specifically Ohio. I'm kind of assuming it was, but they're great choices. So Hopefully this will give you some ideas and you can think beyond what came with your house or just the stock stuff that most people choose from or what you find at Lowe's or Home Depot. That would not be where I would go to try to find some of these native shrubs that we're talking about. I would go to Scioto Gardens. Um, Groovy Plants Ranch should have some. Oakland Nursery. There are several things scattered throughout the Columbus metropolitan area. Just Google it because you know that's what I want you to do. So hopefully this has given you some good ideas. I thank you for listening. And until next time, have a wonderful day. 